students, I'm going to lecture today on module four on new commands that you're going to be using for this module. You're going to be entering the date and time. You're going to be setting the page vertically, removing space after paragraph, how to create envelopes, and how to set and delete tabs. I'm going to get started with the first command, which is the date and time. This will allow you to so select the desired numerical format for document. I'm going to uh, provide a demonstration on how to insert the date and time. The first thing you want to do is click the Insert tab on your ribbon. Then you're going to come to the Text group and click the date and time. And then you'll be able to see here the date and time dialog box. And these are all the different types of formats that are available for you to insert into your document. We're just going to use the basic one, June 27, 2020. And down on the bottom left, it says update automatically. That means if I click that right now and I click OK, the date is going to insert. But that means that every time I open the letter, it's going to have a different date. So if I open it tomorrow, it's going to say Sunday, June 28th. If I open it Monday, it's going to say Monday, June 29, 2020. So I just want to leave it on the date that I type the letter. So I'm going to take this check mark off to leave it blank. We're going to leave it on the English language, and then all we're going to do is click OK. And there's your date, June 27, 2020. So for business documents, you want to make sure you spell out the month, type the date, comma, space, and the year. If you wanted to add the time, we can go back to insert date and time. We can insert a, a, the time, which is 11.25 a.m. right now that I'm doing this demonstration and I'm going to click OK. If I click this, it, it will be the same thing. Every time I open the letter, it's going to have a different time on there. So I'm just going to leave it blank and click OK. And there's your time. OK, so that's how you set your date and time. The next command is going to be the vertical page position. So let me take this information out. And for Word 2016 and 2019, the top margin is set at one inch. Okay, but you can always go back and change that by going to the layout margins and changing the margin on that. But we won't discuss that right now. We're just going to make make it do the basic um, command. Now, if you want to move the insertion point lower on the page, all you have to do is tap enter. So I'm going to tap enter three times. One, two, three. And if I'm going to do this, it's because I'm going to print my document on a printed stationery, which means the company's name is already up here. So when I print it, all my information that I type is going to be from this point down, and the stationery is going to be up here. Okay, so that's how you can move down and give more inches up here on the top margin. And notice on the status line down here in the bottom, it says page of one or one because I'm only have I only have page one. I haven't typed any words, so it says zero. Okay, but then when I go to here anywhere in the status line and right click on your mouse, you're gonna see here that it says vertical page position. I'm gonna click that. I'm gonna put a check mark on there. I'm just gonna click escape and it closes that window. And notice right now I'm at one point nine inches above from the top of the document. Okay, so this is page 101, but right now I'm at 1.19. So if I was to set it at two point, I can just go down and hit hit enter and it'll it change this. Okay, so that's how you can set the vertical spacing on your, on your page. <coughs> Excuse me. To remove space after paragraph, let me delete this and go back up and Word automatically adds extra white space which is line space after you press enter. It makes text easier to read and to save the user time in only tapping enter once before paragraph. So let me show you what this means. So I'm going to type my name here, hit enter, one, two, three. I'm just going to type a phony address here. Okay, 
Okay, notice in between these lines, I have spaces, extra spaces in between these lines. Now there's two ways that you can do that to change these spacing. You can select this, which you just type, go to the Home tab, go to the Paragraph group, go to the line in Paragraph Spacing, click that little arrow, and you can remove the space after Paragraph. Or, if you don't want to do that, you can do this. Hold down the Shift key, press Enter, type the address, Shift, Enter, type the city, state, and zip code. You see I misspelled some things here. Okay, and notice that you don't have that extra space here. Just by doing the Shift, Enter, you can omit these spaces here. So that makes it easier to remove the spaces automatically. Okay, to create envelopes. I'm going to leave that here because I'm going to use that for my envelope. I want to create an envelope to attach it to this document. Okay, so I'm going to go to the window. Mailings tab, I'm going to go to Create Group in the Envelope tab. I'm going to click that, which is Envelope, and notice that the delivery address is automatically on here. Or if it doesn't show on here, what you can do is select the delivery address, and the delivery address is the person that's going to receive this letter. So I'm going to go back to Envelope. Here's the delivery address, and I have the envelope selected. If you have a uh, electronic postage on there, you can click that, but you have to set that up before you do this. And we're not going to go into details on that right now. The return address is your address. If you want the envelope to come back to you, you can leave a blank, which you leave this little blank box here that says omit, or you can click that little box. Oops, you don't want to click that box and you can type your name, last name, address, zip code, okay, state and the zip code. And here it gives you a preview of the envelope. Here's the return address, which is this one, and this is the deliver address here. Now make sure you add an envelope to your printer if you're going to print the envelope. Here it says print, so if you're going to print that letter in that envelope, make sure you add the envelope. But we're going to add it to the document, so I'm going to click Add to Document. Do you want to save the new return address as a result return address? I'm going to say no because it's a phony address. I'm just going to say no. And here it is. Here's my return address. Here's the delivery address. address. And then you can just put a post postage stamp here. And here's the letter on the bottom here. Okay, so it's very simple to add the envelope. The next command is how to set tab stops. So I'm going to use this here, this document, to set some tab stops. When you want to indent a paragraph, tabs are usually aligned, aligned text vertically. Okay, The default tab stops are set at every half inch. So that means if I click this tab, the tab here on my keyboard once, it moves half an inch. So it's set for half an inch, half an inch, half, half an inch. Okay. So that's what it's saying here. That's the default. First thing you want to do is you want to show the ruler on your on your screen tab or your screen so you can set the tabs. What you want to do is go to the view tab on the ribbon. Under show, it has ruler, grid line, navigation, pane. Click the little box that's on the left of ruler. Now you can see the ruler up here, which is the horizontal ruler. Okay, and over here on the left, you can see the vertical ruler. To set a left tab stop, check the selector to, to be sure the left tab is selected for to set the ruler. So how do we know if it's a left, left tab stop? Here. Right here to the left of the ruler, the far left, this little L means left. So like if I point at it, it says left tab. If I point at it again, I move my cursor, go back up. 
in the center tab. Click it again. It's a different one. No, it's a right tab. Click it again and then move and bring my cursor back and it's a decimal tab. And I click it again, move my cursor, go back, and now it's the bar tab. And then I go back, and now it's the first line indent. And now it's the hanging indent. And it brings it back to the left tab. So right now we're just concentrating on the left tab. Okay, so we set the left tab here. Here's the ruler. And let's say I want to tab my name to the two inch mark. Okay, here's the one inch, here's the two inch, three inch, four inch, five, and six. So I want to set it at the two, 2 inch. So I go right at the bottom border of this ruler and I just click the left button on my mouse once and there's the L. I can hit the tab key oops, and it brings it to the left tab at the 2 inch mark. Now how do I remove my tab? It's really simple. All you have to do is if if you had a whole paragraph, select the whole paragraph. So I'm going to select what I don't want here. I'm going to go up here to the little L, which is the left tab. Hold the mouse, left mouse button down, drag it down, and it comes back. And I just hit, oops. And it brings it back to the half inch. So here, I just want to bring it back to that. Now, if I wanted to set this again to the 2 inch, and, oops, I want to get it set, yeah, and then this line to 3 inches, I do that. So then I, when I click to begin my name, notice there's the left tab, and then my address, notice there's the 3 inch, so it comes down to the 3 inch. And I can do the same thing with this one, if I want to set the city to the 5 inch, I do the same thing. I just drag it, hit the tab key, and it comes to the 5 inch mark. Okay, again, to remove it, just drag them, and it, click each one, remove it, or you can select the whole thing and drag each one. Okay, now I can go back. Okay, so there those are the commands that you're going to be learning today for your module four. You're also going to be typing a memo and a business letter, and you're going to um, practice on some of these new commands that we just worked on right now. And you're also going to have a sheet on proofreader's marks. And the proofreader's marks are just marks that we we still use when we're proofreading a document and we want some things changed we put little symbols on there and the reader already knows what those symbols are and they just make the changes according to the symbols okay remember if you have any questions make sure uh, you post on the help center in the discussion board and anyone can jump in to answer your questions but please make sure to read your module 4 from your textbook or your ebook because it's giving you examples and practice on these new commands. Thank you.